Well, hello, everybody. Hello and welcome to Kensington Unitarians annual carol service this year held here on Zoom. We've gathered together as people have through the years to celebrate Christmas in traditional ways with singing and silence, listening to words both ancient and modern, words that tell of the birth of the Christ child, of the strength of innocence and the power of the vulnerable. We're also here, I think, to reclaim the mythic and symbolic elements in Christmas traditions that call out at this dark time of year for light and warmth and good cheer, for gathering in good company with others. And in this year of 2020, that has held so many challenges for us individually and collectively as a world community, though we choose to keep our distances in order to keep one another safe, yet still we need the togetherness, I think, that comes from shared rituals and customs. Yet ours is not an off the peg faith. We're each of us building and rebuilding our faith, losing and finding our faith, working to make sense of life and searching for the best ways to use the gifts we uniquely bring to this world. And you know, we are helped in these tasks of the spirit by gathering with one another by celebrating life, by nurturing connection, acknowledging life's difficulties as well as its pleasures, and affirming that we are part of something greater than ourselves. Our chalice flame, it's lit this morning. It's a symbol of our worldwide Unitarian and Unitarian Universalist community, and it's proclaiming a message of acceptance of justice and of love. So I invite you to take a moment now to breathe in the warmth of connection a simple flame like this may bring us. And may its light, may its light help to rekindle our own sense of an inner light that we in turn, we pass it on to others, especially when they're feeling cold and weary and confused. So I'm going to invite you to uh, join in uh, singing our first carol today. It's O Come All Ye Faithful. It's a carol that would have been sung in Latin, Adeste Fidelis, when it was first written. And as always in our Zoom services, you can join in in a way that suits you best. We'll all be muted so um, we can sing at the top of our voices if we wish, following the words that will appear on our screen or just sit back and enjoy listening to the carol, which is recorded um, from a service in our carol service in our congregation a few years ago. You might, some of you, even hear your own voices.
And can this additional flame represent the joys and the sadnesses each of us may be carrying in our hearts? Let's take a moment to think of some of the issues that we have got in our hearts, especially perhaps at this time of year and in the circumstances we find ourselves in as we follow advice to stay at home as much as possible in order to keep one another safe. Many of us are now unable to be with friends and loved ones. Despite that, may each of us find a place of peace within our hearts this Christmas time and that spark of joy that Michaela mentioned, however restricted may be the ways we have to spend our days. And I'm now going to hand over to Harold, who has our traditional reading from Luke's Gospel, telling of the birth of Jesus. This is such a familiar reading to many of us, but I think there's something strangely comforting in the familiar. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, the Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they'd seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Thank you, Harold, for reading those comfortingly familiar words for us. And I invite us all now to take that imagery of the nativity of the birth of Jesus into a time of reflection and prayer. Let's get ourselves comfortable so that we can turn our attention inwards and treasure these matters in our hearts as Mary did. Our earth is turning and we in these northern lands are close now to the winter solstice, the shortest days and the longest nights. These are indeed times to go within. As we gather to celebrate the birth of the Christ child, may our prayers be for all children of the world, that they might be raised and educated in loving and open-minded ways. May we face the shame of living in a world where children hunger and thirst. 
Let us pray for the leaders of our world who hold such responsibilities in their hands. May the spirit of love and justice that holds us all, may it inspire our leaders and indeed each of us to think with greater vision of a world community existing more sustainably together on this planet Earth. Our shared space, our shared resource. As people in some parts of Britain face even greater restrictions in response to the COVID pandemic, oh, let us pray for our health workers who are placed again under increased pressure as the virus again spreads. And let's hold in our hearts all who are troubled and confused, uncertain how best to respond to the changed guidelines we are living within. These are not easy times, but let us care for one another as we maintain our physical distance. Let's stay aware of our remarkable ability to transcend physical distance and experience such sweet closeness across the separations. Oh, help us, Great Spirit, to loosen the cords of habit of thinking from time to time so that we might be refreshed in our perceptions and opened, opened once more to new possibilities in life. May we sing old songs as if for the first time, recognize old companions as new and wondrous beings in whose presence we are both delighted and curious. Let us not take this life for granted. No, rather something as the rising of the sun on winter solstice dawn, or the sight of another person's face, each could encourage us to kneel in awe and in wonder and gratitude for this miracle that it is to be alive. In quiet stillness now, let us each reflect, saying our own prayers, thinking our own thoughts. for silence, for companionship, for singing, for the turning of the year, for all this and more, let us give thanks. And let us say, if we so wish out loud, Amen. So may it be. And this is a carol service after all. So what better thing to do than to sing together a traditional carol? We're going to be singing Good King Wenceslas where we traditionally suggest that you choose a part to sing. Do you feel like the sturdy monarch today, eagerly setting out on a mercy mission or more like the anxious page who probably wished they'd stayed in bed? We'll all be muted and the words are going to appear on our screen, so do sing along or sit back and just enjoy listening.
smashing carol that is. I was just thinking how many years I have been singing that particular carol. And, and it fits really with the reading that we're going to hear now. It's called The Carols We Sing, and it's by a Unitarian Universalist minister, Edward A. Frost. That's a pleasingly appropriate wintry surname, isn't it? So Edward Frost is writing here about traditions, Christmas traditions like singing carols, and how they hold memories for us down through the years of all the other times and places we've sung those familiar words and tunes. Memories of the people that we've spent those times with and the people we ourselves were long ago. Children, eager or shy perhaps, times happy or sad, loved ones perhaps now long departed. I wonder what memories carol singing holds for you. Here are Edwards Frost's words. The carols we sing are echoes through the years, through the years of our lives. Christmas visitors bringing with them memories of other scenes, of other times and of other people, of ourselves in other guises. We have sung these same songs in the childhood which abides in us still. We've sung them in young love, in the naive dream of an eternity of Christmases. We've sung these songs to drown our hurt and to amplify joy. If in this season we find that we are of many shifting moods, it can only be because we have lived a life of many moods, each recreated in the play of Christmas. We may need to sit quietly and stare into the distance. We cannot always sing, and the spirit needs freedom to wander, to revisit old regrets and to remember joy. Returning then to remind us from whence we came, singing old songs in new places. We sing together in the harmony of our humanness, remembering with each singing of the songs. Words by Edward A. Frost. And I invite you now to take those memories of carols sung in other times of our lives into a meditative part of our service, where I'll say a few words to guide us into silence. And the silence will come to an end with a video made specially for us by Lucy Elston and Lawrence Panter singing and playing O Holy Night. So I hope you can find a comfy way to be still for these few minutes. Maybe have a bit of a stretch now. Roll those shoulders back and down, maybe straighten your back if that works for you. And let's take one of those lovely releasing breaths. And as we breathe out, enjoy that softening of our face muscles, our cheeks, and our foreheads. Maybe close your eyes if that feels right for you. Maybe sense the connectedness, your connectedness with the earth that carries us all beneath our feet, our bodies anchored to our planetary home by the forces of gravity. And as we move towards the winter solstice and Christmas, this can be a time for us to consider what really matters to us a place way beyond the busyness of our individual minds and our everyday lives. In midwinter, the earth rests for a while and invites us to rest with it. We can allow stillness to settle around us for a while. And in that stillness, perhaps each of us can connect and reconnect with that which matters most as we join in the fellowship of silence together with a candle lit to help us focus.
What Are You Here For? by Quinn G. Caldwell. If you came to this place expecting a tame story, you came to the wrong place. If you came for a story that does not threaten you, you came for a different story than the one we tell. If you came to hear of the coming of a God who only showed up so that you could have a nice day with your loved ones, then you came for a God whom we do not worship here. For even a regular baby is not a tame thing. And goodness that cannot threaten complacency and evil is not much good at all. And a God who would choose to give up power and invincibility to become an infant for you certainly didn't do it just so that you could have dinner but if you came because you think that unwed teenage mothers are some of the strongest people in the world. If you came because you think that the kind of people 
who work at three jobs doing stuff you'd rather not do might attract an angel's attention before you snoring comfortably in your bed. If you came because you think there are wise men and women to be found among undocumented travellers from far lands and that they might be able to show you God. If you came to hear a story of tyrants trembling while heaven came to peasants. If you came because you believe that God loves the animals as much as the people and so made them the first witnesses to the saving of the world. If you came for a story of reversals that might end up reversing you. If you came for a tale of adventure and bravery where strong and gentle people win and the powerful and violent go down to dust where the rich lose their money but find their lives and the poor are raised up like kings. If you came to be reminded that God loves you too much to leave you unchanged. If you came to follow the light, even if it, even if it confuses you. If you came for salvation and not safety, then, ah, oh, my friends, you, you are, are in, in the, the right, right place. place. Oh, thank you, Pat and John. Um, that reading really touches me. Uh, I needed to hear that this morning. It, it's underlining the depth of the Christmas message, isn't it? And, and that depth, well, that means that it is still holding relevance for us today, just as in years gone by. Tyrants still pursue the innocent. Families still travel the world to find safety. Children are born in less than ideal circumstances and love and support. Well, they show up in all sorts of unexpected shapes and sizes. In the best of years, I think there's rightly a solemnity to Christmas, a seriousness that underpins its more superficial pleasures. And we're not in the best of years, are we? Humanity is facing so many difficulties and so many of us are experiencing doubt and despair, perhaps a loss of faith in our human capacity to right wrongs. And as that reading told us, the Christmas narrative, it's a narrative of reversals and it brings us the potential for renewed hope, the hope of a light shining in the darkness. So our closing carol, it holds a message of hope with words from the 19th century American writer, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, composed in a time of deep personal sadness for him and in response to the uh, bloodshed of the American Civil War. And yet it ends with these uplifting lines, the wrong shall fail and right prevail, goodwill to all and peace on earth. I think most of us would sign up for that, wouldn't we? So let's enjoin, join in singing together this message of hope for our world.
marvellous. And, and so some announcements. My thanks go to Jane and Janine for the essential and skilled background work of hosting today and to our readers, Harold, John and Pat, all of whom raised a tear with me and to our musicians, Benji Del Rosario, who'll be playing our closing music today and Lucy Elston and Lawrence Panther, who made that smashing video for us while almost at the same time moving home. It's good to spend time with all of you here today. And we'll be back here again on Zoom on uh, Christmas Eve at 5 p.m. You're all welcome. And you might like to have a candle with you and a festive hat or some tinsel. And again, next Sunday's gathering will be at uh, 10 a.m. here on Zoom when we'll be putting the year 2020 gently to bed. Everyone is welcome to join these gatherings and feel free to share the link with your trusted friends. Our West London Green Spirit Group is hosting a, a winter solstice celebration tomorrow, Monday the 21st of December at 3 p.m. And you can uh, book for that by contacting me. We've got our um, festive special coffee morning on Tuesday at 10.30. Again, Christmas jumpers most welcome. And don't forget we're holding a full moon retreat on the afternoon of Wednesday the 30th of December if you'd like to uh, join in a semi-structured time of reflection partly on Zoom and partly with time chilling out on our own. We've got a virtual coffee time to chat today after the service in small groups if you'd like to join in and as always we'd like to take a photo of us all as soon as the music ends so do stick around if you don't mind being in a photo. We're going to have some closing words in a moment, followed by Benji's video of the Christmas song played beautifully for us. Thank you, Benji. Those of you with us on Zoom now might like to um, switch to gallery view on your screens if you can, so that we see each other for these closing words and enjoy that feeling of connection in community, even when we have to be apart. And so, I extinguish our chalice flame, but not the warmth of this community. And may that flame shine out and illuminate all the places where our simple gifts might make a difference in the life of another. Let us each bring our particular gift to the world this year, the gift of being ourselves and of accepting others as they truly are the gift of going beyond the superficial to deeper truths, the gift of our open and our loving hearts. For these surely, they are the gifts that can bring warmth, whatever the weather and whatever we face in life. Amen. Go well, all of you, and blessed be.